want to take a moment to welcome, especially all of you that's watching online today. We don't take this opportunity to come right into your homes for granted. For you that's watching by KITV, watching around the world by YouTube, thank you so much for being part of our global online family here at the Resurrection Center, the place where we empower every person to love, to connect, and to serve. Today, um, this is going to be, this sermon is going to be a little different. And I want to take a moment to talk to, especially our first-time guests, and um, you that haven't been here for, for a while. This is a very special day, as you've already heard here at RC, because it's First Fruit Sunday. Now, uh, I need you to understand the concept of first fruits is rooted in biblical times when God's people lived in an agriculture society. And harvest time was significant because that was when the hard work that the farmers had poured into their crops all year began to pay off. They were literally, ladies and gentlemen, getting ready to reap what they had sowed. God instructed his people to bring the first fruit crop, that means the first fruit from their harvest, to him as an offering. Now, the Hebrew word for the first fruit offering literally means the promise to come. Can you say that with me? The promise to come. You can write it in the chat for you that's watching online. The promise to come. The first fruit offering was proof that the Israelites actually put God first. And it showed that they trusted God to provide for them and their families. The Israelites saw the, fruit, the first fruit as an investment into their future. God told them that if they would bring their first fruit to him, he would bless them with everything that came thereafter. Now, here at the Resurrection Center, this is our first fruit Sunday. And I want you to understand this. I've got to talk to you for a few moments, okay? But we do this one time per year. And we chose to do this on the Easter, on, on the Sunday after Easter. Now, the reason why I'm trying to make sure that you understand this is because I don't want you to believe the enemy's lies. When, they tell you, when the enemy tells you things like, the resurrection center is after your money. We are not after your money. The truth is, we want something way more valuable than your money. We want your soul for Jesus. We want the soul of every one of your family members and friends. We want every person to serve Jesus. So watch this, watch this. If the enemy tells you that Bishop and the leaders of the Resurrection Center is after your money, I want you to do me a favor and tell the enemy, hey, listen, they're after something way more valuable than my money. They are after my soul. Family, we are not afraid to let you know that we want you to be blessed. We want you to be so rooted and grounded in Jesus that regardless of what's going on in your life, that you are okay. Now, if you're a guest today, or you're new to RC, you've never heard of first fruit or what, what, what is this first fruit stuff. We want to make sure that you understand what we mean by first fruit. We want you to know that first fruit and the first fruit celebration is something that we teach, something that we practice here at the Resurrection Center because it is actually in the Bible. And we will not make any apology to anyone for teaching and believing what God put in his word. Now that is a good place to say amen. Maybe I should say it again to get you caught up. We will not make any apology for teaching and preaching something that's in the Bible that God ordained. 
We we'll make no apology for that. Regardless of how controversy or how controversial it may be, we would teach what's in the Bible. Can you say that with me, Resurrection Center? We would teach and live by what's in the Bible. See, anytime you start talking about tithes, offering, first fruit, it brings out the worst of people and the best of people. And the fact is, when it comes to giving and when it comes to church finances, the truth is, ladies and gentlemen, and I can say this, I'm the pastor, that there's been a lot of manipulation, a lot of misuse when it comes to offerings and giving. And I want you to know, just because some people in the body of Christ use God's word to exploit and manipulate people, that does not mean that all church leaders are the same. Family, there are some biblical principles in the Bible that are so powerful, they are so life transformational, that the enemy will use every tactic available in his arsenal to make sure that you never receive and practice what the Bible says when it comes to finances. See, the enemy knows that if he can keep God out of your finances, he will actually render you ineffective in every other area of your life. Now, I want you to think about this. There's a war that's going on right now in the physical between Russia and Ukraine. Now, if you've been watching some of the tactics that they've been using, the United Nations is aggressively trying to cut off Russia's finances. Because if you can cut off a person's or a nation's finances, it means it becomes extremely difficult for them to win any battle or any war that they're fighting in. See, you and I are in a war. And if the enemy can keep us in poverty, if the enemy can keep us in a mindset that keeps us in bondage, it means that he renders us ineffective to fight against the kingdom of darkness. You and I are in a fight, and we must do everything according to the word of God to overcome our enemies. And sometimes the things that we've got to go through in life is not easy. But if you apply the principles that's in this book, you are going to win. Can somebody say amen? amen. Family, notice that the hardest spiritual battles that most of us will ever engage in is the battle for financial blessing. Someone said the last, things that, the last thing that gets saved when someone comes to Jesus is their wallet. And if you want to learn who is who in your life, let me give you a little tip. Just go ahead and get blessed. Because I'm telling you something, church. Some people are so ignorant that they cannot stand to see somebody else get blessed. And I want you to hear two verses of Scripture from the Bible. And, you know, the truth is probably I'm not even really going to preach. I just want to talk to you for a few moments. But I want to give you two Scriptures from the Old Testament, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. The first one is found in Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 17. Look what it says. Every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. Who gives us the blessing? God. Now look at the second one. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7. It says, So let each one give as he is purposed in his heart, not what? Grudgingly, or out of necessity, for God loves, Pastor Terry. Did you ever hear that scripture before, Pastor Terry? God loves a what? Come on, you can read it with me. It's on the screen. Say it out loud with me. God loves a cheerful giver. If somebody could turn on the lights in the house, because I really want to see the people. Family, we believe 
that all giving, whether it's your tithe, an offering, if it's a seed to somebody on the street, everything must be done according to one's faith. Now watch this. The giving of the tithe, the giving of an offering, the giving of a first fruit must be done according to your faith. Giving is not something that can be legislated by a church. It can't be imposed on someone by church leaders. If your giving, if your giving becomes a burdensome devotion to a set of man-made rules or traditions, rather than the act of faith, then there must be something wrong with the giving. The scripture says, let each one give as what? He purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, I heard one pastor say, God loves a cheerful giver, but he will take from a grouch. <laughs> now, here at the Resurrection Center, we believe that the Bible teaches that God loves a cheerful giver, but if we're going to receive any benefit from our giving, then our giving must be done in the right attitude by faith. Am I making that clear? Now, here at the Resurrection Center, we believe, church, that we've got to do it by faith. So I want you to listen carefully. We don't teach the importance of giving to try to get something from you. We teach the importance of giving to try to get something to you. We want you to be blessed. Thank you so much. Did you hear me? I said, we want you to be blessed. No, no, I don't, I don't think you're getting it. I said, we, we as Bishop First Lady, the elders of this church, we want you to be blessed. I, I need you to think about this for a moment. See, our commitment as leaders of the Resurrection Center, we promise we will not be jealous or envious of your blessing. We actually want to celebrate your blessing. We don't, we don't want you to be beneath us. We want you to be above us. We actually want you to be so blessed, to be so powerful, not just in finances, but in every area of your life. We want, uh, we want you to surpass us as leaders. Some leaders, some leaders teach you, and they teach within the body of Christ, that you cannot become more blessed than your leader. Now, I don't know about them, I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying for me, I believe the greatest way to honor us as your leaders is that you surpass anything that we have done. That if we've got a great marriage, we believe your marriage should be better. We believe we're, we're blessed financially. We want you to be blessed and more blessed than us because watch this, ladies and gentlemen, you get to stand on our shoulders. You get, to, you get to operate and to learn, and you even get to use our faith. So you can join your faith with our faith. That means you should be able to go further, do more than what we're doing. So here's our commitment. I want you to understand this. We will not be jealous of you. If God has called you to ministry... We're praying that God will open such great doors for you that you'll have church of thousands and thousands. You don't always need to stay underneath our limit. We want you to excel in every area of your life. We want you to be more spiritual. We want you to be blessed mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, and watch this, relationally. We want to empower you so you can become the best God version of yourself. In fact, I want you to understand this. It is in the best interest of our leaders to pray for your success. 
We need, no, 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 I, I need you to, I don't, I, and I, I appreciate the amens, but I need you to get this. It is in our best interest to make sure that we are doing everything we can to pray your success. I would never attend a church where the leaders didn't want me to succeed. Did you hear me? I would never attend a church where people, where the leaders didn't want me to succeed. Because the truth is, I need people in my life that want me to succeed. If all you've got in your life is people that's trying to pull you back, you're never going to move forward. We want you so blessed that the people around you look at you and say, my God, what kind of God do they serve? I want you to be so blessed that even your enemies want to become your friend. Family, watch this. Giving to God and having the capacity to help others is one of the greatest privileges our Heavenly Father has conferred upon us. Being the solution to someone else's problem is very affirming and empowering. I remember, and I know none of you would ever do this, but I remember complaining to God one day. Thank you. Thank you, David. I saw you smile. That's why I wanted the light. I needed to connect with somebody. I remember complaining to God one day. And I was saying to God, God, you know, man, this is so difficult. I have so many people pulling on me. So many people, you know, coming to me for answers. Sometimes people are coming to me for help. God, I don't know. What do you expect from me? And I was having that conversation with God. And you know what God said to me? He said, hey, Dave, if you wish, I can flip it. Some of you just got that. He said, I can flip it. And I said, what do you mean? He said, if you wish, I can flip it, and you'll be the one asking rather than the one meeting the need. What do you want? See, you need to understand, church, Sometimes we're complaining to God about something because we're the solution. But trust me, it's a whole lot more fun being the one that's providing the solution than the one that's in need of the solution. And I'm believing that God is going to so empower you, so strengthen you, so, so make you anointed, so full of a spirit that when people come to you, they come to you because they see you as the solution and not the problem. So many people in the body of Christ is always the problem. Family, we're supposed to be the solution. We're supposed to be the solution to people's pain. We're supposed to be the solutions to people, people's financial problems. Did you hear me? I'm telling you, I, I really believe this. See, some of us will, will never understand the power that's, that comes with meeting people's needs because we don't believe that we are powerful enough to meet people's needs. Family, you are the solution to someone's pain. You are the solution. If you... I, oh, Father, I, wanna, I so want to prophesy, but I just, just want to talk. You have the solution. All the things that you've been through in life, it wasn't sent to destroy you. It was meant to teach you so that you could be the solution to somebody else's pain. Don't, don't tell people, well, you just got to go through what you got to go through. No, the fact that you've been through some things and I'm connected with you means that I shouldn't have to go through the same pain that you went through because you should love me enough to help me to avoid the pain. Jesus, help us. Family, giving to God is supposed to be an act that comes from loving him in your heart and loving him and loving other people. Now watch, I'm, I'm coming. 2 Corinthians 8, 12 says this. For if there is first a willing mind. Now this is referring to offerings, okay, to God. If, for if there is a willing mind, it is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Now family, watch this. God is never going to ask you for something that you don't have 
or for something that you can't go get. Watch this. He asked the disciples to feed 5,000 people. Do you remember that story? They look at Jesus and they say to Jesus, Jesus, are you insane? Do you not see all these people? This is the Dave version, right? Are you, are you insane? Look at all these people. There's 5,000 men plus the ladies plus children. And you expect us to feed all of these people? But guess what? What they missed and what they didn't understand, they didn't have it in the natural. But what God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, was giving them, the deposit that Jesus put in them, he had already put in them enough power to go get through a miracle to feed the 5,000. And see, as Christians, as people of faith, you might look and you might say, well, I don't have the solution. But the person in you, which is the Holy Spirit, has the solution. All we've got to do is begin to talk and to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit, get his direction, and you will be able to feed 5,000 with, with, with five loaves and two fish. If God asks you to give something and you don't have it, guess what? He will give you the faith to create it so you have it to give. God is just looking for someone to bless so he can make them a blessing. Now you need to say, if that is your desire, say, here I am, God. God, I'm telling you now, this is a prophetic word. God is looking for some people that he could set them up and he can trust them enough to be a blessing with, with, with things, with finances, with money, with wisdom. A lot of people have wisdom, but they try to keep their wisdom to themselves. Are you tracking with me here, family? Listen, today we're going to take a first fruit offering. And it's... It's not something that you need to do if you're going to do it grumbling, if you're going to do it fearfully, if you're going to do it out of a burdensome obligation, then maybe, in fact, you should actually reconsider giving your first fruit. You've never heard a pastor say before, maybe you should reconsider giving an offering. But today, maybe it's your first day. I want you to reconsider. Because what you're going to give today, if you're going to give anything... It's nothing compared to what you're going to receive. I believe in the promises of God. And when we give, when we give with the right heart. No, no, wait, wait a second. Giving to God or giving cheerfully doesn't mean that your flesh feels good. <sighs> no, no, you, you got to understand this. Giving to God or giving cheerfully doesn't mean that your flesh feels good about what you're doing. It means that you don't let your flesh dictate or rule your spirit. Some people refuse to give anything to God because they're waiting for their flesh to feel good about what they want to do for God. My flesh seldom ever feels good about spending time in prayer. Hey, look at you. You thought I was going to say giving. My, I'm, t I'm telling you the truth because I want you to understand some things. My flesh doesn't always feel good about spending time in prayer. My flesh doesn't feel good every Sunday morning when my clock goes off to get up and go to church. My flesh never, not one time, felt good about fasting. See, if I'm going to wait for my flesh to feel good in order to do something that God says is necessary, then the truth is, I'm never going to do it. I remember the first time that I sold a $5,000 seed. And I remember my flesh never felt good about that at all, at all, at all. I told you this before, that God spoke to me about sowing something into someone's life one time. It took me six months, six months debating God. And until 
I yielded to the Spirit of God, I was in misery. See, I understand that there's a constant war that's going on between my flesh and my spirit. And my flesh must be forced to submit to the things of the spirit. The root problem, watch this, this is wisdom, church. The root problem with every sin that you commit is the flesh wins over the spirit. Your flesh may never feel like celebrating when you're walking in obedience to God. That's why the flesh must be crucified. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17 says this, For we naturally love to do evil. I know it's not a period there, but I'm putting one there just for a moment. For we naturally love to do evil. I know we're in church. See how silent it is? For we naturally love to do evil. To do evil things that are what? Look at the verse. Just the opposite from the things that the Holy Spirit tells you to do. And the good things we want to do when the Spirit has His way with us are just the opposite of our natural desires. Why are you reading this, Bishop? I'm reading this because I want you to understand that when we get up here and we talk about giving with a cheerful heart, we're not talking that from the flesh. We're talking that from the spirit. There's two forces. The rest of the verse says these. These two forces within us are constantly fighting each other to win control over us, and our wishes are never free from their pressure. That's what the Word of God says. See, if you're willing, or if you, if, you're, if you feel like you've got to wait for your flesh to agree with your spirit before doing something for God, watch this, watch this. You're never going to do it. That's why so many people get confused about tithing and offerings. And we tell people, you know, just give with your heart. And that's true. That's in the word of God. But what we forget sometimes is to tell you this, the next part, giving with your heart doesn't mean that the flesh is going to feel good about your giving. Maybe God is going to ask you to give something away because he wants to test you to see if he's first in your life or if he can actually trust you. See, when I give, the part of me that rejoices It's the part that knows what's going to happen because I give. Thank you, one of you. Because I know beyond a shadow of any doubt that when I give, it releases something in the spirit. When I put God first in my finances, I know what's going to happen. Malachi 3.10 tells us that. That the windows of heaven are going to open and God is going to pour down a blessing until there's no more need. God says, when I put him first, he's going to rebuke the devourer for me so that it may not destroy the fruit of my soil and my vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all the nations will call you blessed for you will be a, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. Do you know that the only time in the scripture Where God says that he's going to rebuke the devourer for you is in the area of your giving. Every other time he says he's going to do it through you. But when it comes to giving, God says, I will rebuke the devourer for you. Now, I don't know about you, but if if I was choosing an all-star team, I would want God on my side. And I would do anything that I can. If I was the GM or the owners of the Montreal Canadiens, I would do everything in my power. I would spend big money to get the very best on my team. Now watch this. You and I have an opportunity to have God on our team. No, no, you don't believe that. I I, I know, I expect it to be quiet. We're talking about money. But I want God on my side. I want God on my team. I want God to be the CFO of my life. 
And in order for me to do that, church, there are some things that I got to do. I want God to rebuke the devourer for me. Family, giving is an expression of your love and gratitude towards someone. Nothing more, nothing less. How many of here have ever joined a gym? Let me see your hand. Don't be shy. Yeah, me too. My hand's up. And let me ask you this question. If you joined a gym, it's probably because you wanted to become healthier, you wanted to build muscle. But how many know that you never ask your flesh if you want to go to the gym? Nobody ever asks, if you ask, if you ask your flesh if you should have that piece of cheesecake. If you ask your flesh if you should cheat on your spouse. If you ask your flesh if you should give to God. Anything, never mind a first fruit offering. The flesh is always going to tell you no. The flesh will always tell you, take that day off. You deserve it. You take a break. You poor thing. Sleep in. Be lazy. Now watch this. Watch this. I don't ask my flesh if it wants to go to church. Oh, <laughs> did you hear me? I said I don't ask my flesh if it wants to go to church. Because my flesh is going to always lead me to wrong. I'm not going to ask my flesh if I'm going to serve in kids' church. I'm not going to ask my flesh if it feels like being part of the ushers. I'm not going to ask my flesh if, if I should join the worship team. I already know the answer if I'm going to ask my flesh. Because in order for me to do anything great in the kingdom of God or anything great in the world, in my life, I can't ask my flesh. I've got to reject and push down my flesh and do what I know it's right. So I already know the answer. My flesh wants the opposite of what's best for me. Not sometimes. All the time. There's never one time when I'm going to prayer and I'm like, woo -hoo! I get to pray. No. I got to drag my butt out of bed. Listen to Romans 8, verse 7. It says this. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. Now, see, I don't know about you, but when I got born again, my mind didn't get saved. Am I talking to anybody? When, when I got born again, my mind didn't get saved. My mind has got to be put under the blood of Jesus. And, it, and it, I mean, it fights. Do you, do you know, do you know, I'm not Jesus, and I never pretend that I'm Jesus, but I believe in the crucifixion. And I believe in living again. Because this mind of mine, has been crucified so many times, nailed to the cross. Every single, nailed to the cross. And I turn around, and there it is, off the cross, telling me what I should do, telling me what I, and it's like, did, 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 I, did I not just crucify you? But no, 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 it, 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 <laughs> it comes back so fast. I mean, it's just insane. James 4.4, 4, look at this. I'm really just talking. I mean, I'm going somewhere. James 4 and 4. The friendship of the world is enmity with God. Now watch this. Do you know the word enmity means a deep-rooted hatred? Deep-rooted hatred. Family, I know that some of you are more spiritually mature than me. But I want you to know something. My flesh has a deep-rooted hatred towards my spirit when I'm trying to be obedient to God. 
You have never experienced a hard fight until you try to get your flesh to submit to the Spirit of God. I'm not going to ask my flesh if it wants to serve. I'm not going to ask my flesh if it wants to be generous because I already know the answer. Listen, church, I'm saying all of this to make sure that you understand that when people start bringing an offering today and they start to place it on this altar called the first fruit offering, I want you to understand they are choosing not to allow their flesh to lead their spirit, but they're making a decision that they're going to be led by the spirit rather than the flesh. They are forcing their flesh to be submitted to the spirit of God. When God gives an instruction, he doesn't speak to the flesh. He speaks to your spirit. The offering that you're giving today is not an offering that is given to bishop. Thank you. The offering that you're giving today is not an offering for bishop. It's not for the church leaders. It is used to meet the ministry needs. Family, we chose to celebrate first fruits on the Sunday after Easter because Easter Sunday is the day that we remember, celebrate, commemorate the thing, the time that God gave his absolute best to us in sending his only begotten son Jesus to live, to die, and to rise again. Because Easter is the time that God gave his best for us Our first fruit Sunday is the day that we chose to give back to God our very best. And we do this one time per year on the Sunday after Easter. And this is the time, watch now, watch now, here it comes. This is the time that we challenge our family members, the people at the Resurrection Center, to give a significant seed offering as the reflection of, of giving all back to God in appreciation for sending Jesus and appreciation offering to Jesus for sending us the Holy Spirit. Now some of us, some of us, are going to give an amount today in the amount in the amount of a full week's salary. Why a full week's salary? A full week's salary because we believe the full week's salary represents giving God everything. We chose to give God everything. Some of us choose to give him more than a week's salary. Now, I I, I get it. Hang with me, okay? Some of us are going to give more than a week's salary because we believe if there's something that qualifies to be a sacrifice, we've got to feel it. You cannot say that you are sacrificing for someone or for something and you not feel it. There are some of us here today, and we're giving an offering. Some of you have already given your offering. Some of of it is a sacrifice, but some of us are giving more than the one-week salary because we can't just give a week's salary and not feel any pain. Family, in order for us to feel that our giving is a sacrificial seed, some of us got to give $1,000. Some of us got to give $2,500. Some of us got to give $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. Now watch, here's my point of bringing up these amounts. It's not to put pressure. What matters is the amount must be a sacrifice. Do you feel it? See, When we give a sacrificial seed offering, it's not the amount that makes it a sacrificial seed offering, but it's the cost or the amount of pain we feel in the giving. Family, over the last few weeks, we've been teaching a sermon series on discovering the values of values. Okay, and values, watch this, values are the fundamental belief that dictates one's behavior and determines our choices. Listen, if this sermon series is going to have any long-term effect in your life, you've got to define or refine your values. 
And family, I told you last week that if you're going to become like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bears uh, uh, amazing, uh, luscious uh, fruit in its season without fail, and if you want everything you do to prosper, you've got to be rooted and grounded in God's love. Family, love must be the root of all of our values because the Bible says what? It says God is love. Now, we've been talking about love, and we talked about love last week because it was Easter, but because today is first fruits, I really wanted to, to spend the day talking about, and Pastor Terry had no idea. Pastor Terry, in fact, wasn't even supposed to do announcements and offering today because it was supposed to be Pastor Denise, but, but she's not feeling well, so she couldn't be here. So Terry actually was a, a fill-in. But the topic that I wanted to talk about today was about generosity. And you know what? I can teach for the next hour, maybe for the next three days, about generosity. Or I can show you an example of generosity. And I believe if I show you an example of generosity, I think you're going to be more encouraged than if I just spending time to teach you on what generosity is. I can do that next week. So I'm going to pause here for a moment and I'm going to invite some people to come to the stage. I'm going to invite Sister Adriana, an actor, who is two people who have been very faithful. I don't know where they are. I can't really see where they are. But Hector and Adriana, I want you guys to come on down to, to the stage. Would you give them a hand as they come down? And uh, I don't know if I prepared the, uh, the team or not, but I'm going to need some microphones. So all real, I know you always do a great job. And I'm also going to invite Pastor Ricardo. Pastor Ricardo, would you come on down? Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Is it okay? I'm going to just move this out of the way, and I want, because I really want you to be able to see them and hear them. Come on, come on down, Pastor Ricardo. You guys, you can take your mask off if you want. This, now, Elid, that's Pastor Ricardo's wife, she had to go to work. And this is part of her testimony, and she would do a way better job than Pastor Ricardo. Right? Of course she would. But because she couldn't make it, Pastor Ricardo is going to do his best. Uh, can I, is the microphone somewhere nearby? Think, just come on up, don't, don't be shy. I apologize for not preparing you. If we could get a few microphones, give Pastor Ricardo one, and uh, we're going to give Adriana this one. Not, no, not you. I'm going to give it to your wife. No, I'm I love you. And uh, if I can get another microphone, just come on up and listen. Uh, you guys, would you step right out here for a moment? Now, w this was, we have not rehearsed. Is that clear? So if Prophetess Jennifer, Summer, if this goes really, you know, if it goes wanky and it's like all over the board, excuse us. But I want you to hear the heart of what's being said. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an incredible incredible testimony of the power of generosity it's the power of people being part of a family where people care about each other and where they listen to the holy spirit adriana and hector come on don't be shy don't be shy adriana i want you to start off by telling us a little of the background story uh, about what what we're going to talk about Good morning, everyone. Um, all this started uh, almost two years ago, where we started looking for our house. Two years two looking years. for their home. Yeah. And as everybody knows, the market became so crazy. Um, let's say that the time we went to visit a house, uh, we have to wait outside that somebody or the person visiting before us came out through the back door. So we can go in, and there were people standing in the same street waiting. We go in the visit, and we left fast so they can go too. And 
watching the time, we, and that time we had the baby, and we decided we're gonna stop because it became too stressful, and we don't want to do that, put all the pressure in our family or in us. And we stopped, and we decided to take the money because that may is a. So you had a down payment. Yeah, we had at that moment. And you decided payment. to take the down payment and put an investment. And put it in so an investment. So you cannot touch. Right. So you couldn't so, get your money. Yeah. So because, just just so I can make yeah. sure everybody understands, yeah. they were giving up hope that they would find a house. Yeah. So they're taking their money that they had for the down payment and they're making an investment, yeah. locking their money in Locked so they couldn't in. touch it, all right? Yeah. And I love what she said about when they would go to look at homes, the lineups used to be so long mm. that in order for them to be able to go into the house, people had to go through the back door. That's how hot the market was, right? Am yeah. I right? Yeah, and it was very discouraging because uh, we were new buyers. New and, buyers. And the people uh, who need, we need to compete with was people that were ready to give 80 or $60,000 more to, for the house. So Did you I, get that? Yeah. Sixty to 80000 more people would pay. So if you wanted 300000 for the house, people were saying, I'll give you three eighty. Exactly. And, they, and our agent, he says, um, just offer $60,000 more just to compete. And I say, how to compete? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to get the house, but at least you're going to have experience. And I say, what? How experience? <laughs> so I said to my husband, no, we can uh, go we through this, you know. And say, okay, we stopped. And we invest the money. And honestly, I took out of my mind the idea to have the house at the point that when God did it, until today, I'm in shock. Wait, wait, okay. <laughs> did, did you hear that? She, 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 she's saying that she's still shocked. Now, hang on, Hector and Adriana. Come here, Pastor Ricardo. Stand right here. Tell us what's going on in your life at, at around the same time. Uh, around the same time, uh, my wife, well, I shouldn't say my wife. My wife would say, no, Ricardo, only me. Uh, she, she felt uh, that we needed to move out. And, uh, now, they have a house, right? They had a house. Yeah, we have a house, and we needed to move out to get a bigger house. And then uh, on my Because head, Pastor Ricardo has got three children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hector's got three children. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I messed that up. No, I'm kidding. He's got a few kids. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so, so, so in my head, I... Uh, you know, I come from a family of seven kids, so I was like, ah, you know what, we lived in a four, you know, four rooms, uh, so I was like, ah, I'm okay, you know, I don't need to, but uh, it just happened that I went to my daughter's rooms, and then I was like, man, I was shocked, so I, it, I think it's that time that I feel compelled that I really need to, so I went to see my wife, and I said, you know what, I, I feel that, you know, we should move, and she said, oh, now you feel, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. That's so, right, be honest. Yeah. So, so, so from that, I mean, she, she, we've been visit different houses in the past. I just wasn't on it or I was, you know, accompanying my wife to go and see. But at the time I said, yes. So at the time she had already started looking for houses and, but she wouldn't tell me, but she was looking and stuff like that. So she said, okay, you know what? I found a house. Do you want to go see it? So we went and, uh, and, uh, and the house we went, uh, I, uh, you know, we, we decided we wanted. So it was, it was really for time for us to move and then to do, to do an offer uh, on the house. And, uh, and, uh, and um, I don't know how, how just continue? Or? Yeah, yeah, just continue. Okay. I cut you off when I'm ready to come back to Adriana. Yeah, so therefore we needed to, uh, to sell our house. And then, uh, so when we did the offer conditional to sell them our, our house, then uh, we had someone, we had a potential buyer then it lasted about a month until we received a, a, a notice that the, 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 the mortgage didn't go through. So if those people that are looking for houses, you would know a month is an extended period of a contract uh, um, to buy a house. And then, uh, so I was at the limit where um, the house, the, 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 the promise of purchase the house came to an end. And, right. uh, and uh, so in our house, at first, we wanted to 
to, to get the house. And uh, when they told us at the same time how much we would need to get the house, uh, it was way over what we Okay, what hang, we hang on. Now come back to you, Adriana. Now you tell us what you're praying for. What were you then praying for? Then we started 21 days prayer and fasting. 21 days of prayer and fasting. In January. And I have to tell you that um, they say by Friday I received a message. Uh, because they say I received a, a, a video from Sister Claudette Friday before. From Sister Claudette? From Sister yeah. Claudette, yeah. Okay. And the video shocked me because the video was somebody talking about why God sometimes don't answer your prayer. And... Uh, the, the video explained that uh, don't answer your prayer because you have a second plan. Mm. And if you, if you see the video, your, your mind is going to say, no, no, no. We, we put everything in, hand, in God's hands. But, you know, God opened my heart to um, meditate on that. And it brings repentance to my heart because I realized that many times when God don't do the things, my mind says, if God don't do this way, I'm going to search that way. <laughs> Just and like most of us, yes. right? We always have a backup plan. Yeah. So um, I start, we started 21 days, and that weekend, Sunday, I got my COVID test positive, and I felt so weak. And I say, you know, God, we're going to still, my, half, my husband too, we felt so bad. That was our, for him his second day, for me my first day. And we felt so bad, like no fever, but we don't have a strength to stand or whatever. So we say, like, we're gonna stay on the bed, just praying and reading the Bible and listening to worship. And this is during the 21 days of prayer and yes, fasting. Yes, yes. And um, when the first day came, I told you, I forgot about the house. <laughs> I don't let that worry a thing, but that comes to my mind that day. And I pray, and I, I knew that was the Holy Spirit because it came like this. Father, and this time I'm going to commit in your hands my personal three desires for this year. And this is the only time I'm going to pray for this during my fasting time and during my next time. Because you know my own desire is... Uh, that you be really, to me, my Alpha and Omega. So I have the desire to wake up in your presence, to go to sleep in your presence, and pass all my days to you. That this year be the year to, to really be in the presence of the Lord. And that was my real desire, my only one. But I don't know why I came up only with these desires. And I say, and you know, my first uh, desire for this year is to have my house. And I want my house has three rooms, four rooms, one in the basement, one playroom, and one pool for my kids for the summertime. <laughs> yeah. Be specific. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And and one pool for my kids for summertime. The price that we got approved. Don't tell me why, because we we wonder sometimes he, he can get much more. But I w that was part of the miracle. We say we got 400,000, so I need a house in three, uh, 380 because we, we, need, we want to buy another car. And I'm, I don't gonna look no more the house. I don't go to nobody's house. And no, you're gonna send somebody, somebody's gonna call me, somebody's gonna speak my agent, whatever is gonna happen. I'm not going to search the house. I'm going Did to stay in my house. Did you guys get this? Did you, are you getting it? <laughs> she is not going to search for the house. No, I'm not looking for it. It's like, even the agents don't contact us more just for say hi, when you're going to be ready, okay? But no more. It's like we're, we were done on that. By Wednesday, okay, two days later, I received a call. And that was Elliot. And Ellie told me, hi, Adriana, how are you? How is your family? You know, we were talking. And then she told me, Adriana, the Holy Spirit put in my heart that you come to visit my house. Did you hear? The, I'm, I'm telling you, this is big, eh? And I say, okay. And she say, yeah, the Holy Spirit put in my house, offer you my hang house. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Pastor Ricardo, were you aware of any of this? Or this, <laughs> this was God speaking to your wife, right? Yeah. At Did, the time. Yeah. You want, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. 
Uh, so as I said before, we were, you know, we were stuck in, 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 in towards uh, the amount of money needed to, to purchase the house. So, uh, so when it happened, what we did, my wife and I, we decided to, to, to <laughs> it's weird, yeah, I'm a pastor, but I'm going to say, we decided to walk by faith. Or oh, I should say I decided to walk my faith. Because those people that know my wife, my wife, she's a, she's a pastor woman Ricardo, of faith. Pastor you don't ever have to feel bad about that. Because you're a pastor doesn't mean that you don't, you're not in the flesh. It is just as hard for us pastors to walk in the spirit as any one of you. Trust me on this, okay? So, so go so ahead. So at the time, uh, so I had to question myself. I said, Ricardo, you teach about faith. You know faith. Now you need to walk by faith. And I said, and while I was talking to God, and I said, okay. So I went and talked to my wife. Said, you know what? We're waiting for the amount. And there's a principle that I learned a few years ago that once we receive, you know, offerings and or, or, or money, and if it's not the amount that you're waiting can for, come back. that you were waiting for, you should you should sow it back. So I said to my wife, I know that she had received some money somehow, don't even know how, and it just got transferred. I also received money, and that's that Sunday that I came here. And no, I no, asked don't just gloss me. over that like you've received money. You mean you mean you received like real money? Yeah, real money from from different individuals. Yeah. Wow, that's a, that's amazing. <laughs> and, and, so and, this was not money that you had worked for or money no. that you had planned. No. And this is really on the spot, eh? Because I didn't ask these questions, so. So, yeah. okay, so, so the Lord blessed both you and your wife yeah. financially. Yeah. Okay. So we took, so it wasn't the amount that the, Lord, that the Lord had spoken to my wife about. So I said, you know what, let's sow it. So that's the, the Sunday we came here and we asked people that we needed to sow. We asked the elders to pray for So that you amount. sowed a seed. Yeah, I sowed a seed. I we forgot that part. And we sowed it. And then, uh, and, and expecting, and that was our way of expressing our faith to God, that we will receive the amount in order to purchase the house. Got it. And there was two reasons, to get the amount and also to get our house sold. So okay. what happened to that, and so we started walking by faith and starting to do all the, you know, different things that needed to be done. And then, uh, and then uh, what happened is that the, so I said before, the person that was supposed to, to buy our house, it declined. Right. So we were at the limit. And, uh, so that's and then God is speaking to a lid yeah. about calling Adriana. Did, yeah. And she didn't tell you? It, no. Well, don't, what you happened, don't have to feel bad. What happened it. is that we decided to pray about that because we were going to, we were trying to sell the house ourselves. Yeah. So we started to pray before we put it in the market because we were already late, you know, okay. to put it in the market. So we started to pray and the Lord came and, and told us after our prayer, there was two people that we needed to, to call. Okay. So, so I called the person that I felt the Lord asked me. Obviously, a lid hears better than you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I called, and uh, she called. Don't worry, my wife hears better than and me. And she called, and uh, and so we were doing through the proprio. So the proprio was also scheduled to come and take all the the, the pictures on the Saturday. So the my the person I called came on the Friday. Okay. And then the proprio came and they called the pictures on Saturday. Got it. And because they had COVID, and I think the last day yeah. it was getting, so that's when uh, my wife called Adriana. Right. And that's when uh, they decided to come on Sunday. And, and as I mentioned man, before, a house needed to get sold in order for our loan to be approved. And, and we were at the limit. <laughs> uh, at the I, limit. I want you to see this. They're at their limit. We have people over here in prayer and fasting praying that God would provide somehow a house without them chasing for it. And I only have 380000 Are you Are you following me? Okay. So, a lid calls you. Yeah. And she says that the Holy Spirit um, make you feel that we come and visit the house. And she say, I have a house, four rooms, one in the basement. How many rooms did you ask for? Four. Four. Uh-huh, four rooms. How about the swimming pool, though? Huh? Is the swimming pool there? Yeah. The, <laughs> add the swimming pool. That's good. We four want rooms, that swimming pool. Remember, we room. don't hate. We celebrate. <laughs> yeah. With the playroom, with the pool in the back, in the backyard, and, and I say, what is the offer? And she says, 380. Did you hear that? That to me is absolutely, absolutely, in this market, yeah. this is absolutely honored of, okay? Now, Pastor Ricardo, do you, do you have anything else to add? I know you're nervous. 
<laughs> so, because, uh, of course, this is, this is personal stuff. So he's got to be careful, I'm sure, of, of what, it, what they share. But I can't miss this opportunity for you to hear how God works. They need to sell a house. They need to buy a house. Yeah, they're in the same church. But they, they don't know. God is speaking to one. Call this person and tell them to come and see your house because you want to sell a house. They know, hey, this is the amount that I got to pay. They're saying, this is the amount that we're going to sell our house to this person. They're not saying, they are not saying, ladies and gentlemen, this is the price of the house. They are saying for you, God is saying, we need to charge you this much money. And I know they're not going to tell you this, so, and, and Hector's got a part too. Hang on a sec, okay? But what God told them to give these people the house for is, is thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and tens of thousands lower than what they could get. No, see, you, you don't get it. You don't, you don't get it. Because I, what I need you to connect here is he, God, is using them to meet a need that they have. Now, and not, here's the interesting part. He's going to meet their need, but he's going to, he's going to cause them to give a seed. To give a seed that releases a supernatural blessing. Now, I, I don't know, Pastor Ricardo, I never ever asked you. We had no discussion about this, I don't, I don't think. If we did, like, it was very brief. But if you have not received a return on your seed, we're going to pray supernaturally because that seed cannot be wasted. That seed must bear fruit. If it hasn't already bear fruit, it's got to bear fruit because there's no way in God's green earth is God going to give instruction like that to a lid to do this while they're praying and for your seed not come to pass? And, and, and you know, Bishop, I, uh, I mean, I would never say no for me to receive. <laughs> but, but I am so grateful, uh, or I'm already grateful for what God has done because I believe that the, 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 the seed that we sow enable us to get a potential buyer, but not only get the potential buyer, but he also made our loan that we needed to purchase the house get approved. Yes. Because I understand. Not only we didn't have a buyer, but we also needed uh, uh, you know the, the, the you know the, the credit, the amount the, the sure. amount of credit in order to, to purchase the house. Yes. And and, and, and and God made it such a way where they said that we were having problem to get the loan accepted in a week after that we sowed that seed we got a call back and said you know what we did something else and your and your loan got approved wow i did i didn't even know that can you say that again oh uh, a week after after you sowed the seed yeah a week after the, the you got it seed, all back we had a call back from the agent okay saying that we did something else because they were they told us when we sold they said we're going to try something else and they did and then they came back to us a week after, telling us that our loan is approved. So you got the house you wanted? Pardon me? You got the house you wanted? Yes, we got the house we wanted, and the house that my wife wanted. And well, that's she, what's important. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Specific, yeah. Exactly can can you bear with did. us another minute? Okay. Adriana, did we miss any part for you? I know you're looking at your husband. But I, I know Hector's got a part. I'm going to let Hector talk because uh, this, this is also incredible. When God starts something, he will finish it. Okay? So, are you, you want to add anything else? Go ahead. When we went to visit the house, yeah. uh, I don't know how to explain it. I cannot see properly. Because okay. I, I was ahead. in shock. So, yeah. my eyes were like watery eyes. And I just... Uh, asked my husband about the house later because my husband was curious, you know. Yes, of and course. He was, <laughs> Pastor Ricardo was showing everything. But in my eyes, I can because I was so impressed for all that. Right. And I can see properly. Now, 
uh, that I ask God to remember the house. Uh, there is a thing when uh, like three, four, three years ago, the first time Elite and I we went together to a woman's uh, meeting, yeah. with, uh, first lady. Yeah. Uh, I remember she told me, oh, Adriana, you know, in the future I would like to change the house. And I say, oh, me too. That was, that's it. Mm. We never talk again about that. And I say, how you know what is your house? I say, I asked Elite, and Elite told me, the Holy Spirit showed me the image of something wow. that I will know it is my house. And with this house, I say, God, God I know it's you, but you need to show me uh, something that let me, you know, see the excitement because I am too in shock and I want to go out after the shock and just enjoy the moment. And the Lord showed me that I, I tell Elite the stairs that they have for the second yeah. floor is is made in an iron and a wood in the same way was my uh, first our first couple room in wow. Venezuela. Wow. We have to go long way for to get that couple room. But I say to my husband, I want my room in that material in that way. And when I saw that stairs, I thought. That was the most impressive thing. And I, then I forgot, through the process I forgot. And this week, this week, that come to my mind, the resemblance of that room and that stairs, how God knew and I forgot. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Now the second part. Yeah. Now, Hector has got an incredible part to tell. Hector, can yeah. you share your part yeah. of your testimony? Hello, brother. God bless you, everybody. In this moment, the, the history, I wanted to say something. When Adriana told me that the sister Eli called her and say, we want to sell you house, the, his house to us, I went to my room because Adriana was very happy. Me, I was happy too, but I don't know, something wrong in me. Men, and I, skeptical. And, and I went we, to the room. We men are way skeptical. And huh? I prayed to go and I said to go, are you serious? You're going to give me now a house to us when we don't have all money? Hey, do you remember you the first part? What did he do with the down payment? Uh, uh, yeah, are you serious, God? Okay, my wife was very happy with your house, and we are very happy. And my mind started thinking immediately. Okay, down payment, we need to pay the notary, we need to pay this to the bank. The welcome, welcome, tax. welcome tax. Yeah. Ta, 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 ta. Oh my goodness. No. And, all and of I said to my wife, in. I had the solution. I want to have second job. I need to find my job to another job. Because then this way, in the time that we had, maybe around two months, I think so we can have the money that we need. But my wife told me, no. Listen, guys, no. listen to your spouse. God, go to provide us the money. And I say, yes, yes. <laughs> second plan, second plan. I had the account in the bank, credit account. I can take the money to the bank. <laughs> Immediately in my mind, I was thinking. I was thinking, yeah, 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 I know, yeah. I believe, I believe, go, go to provide the money. Yeah. But in January, I spoke with my, my in the uh, human resource, the company department about my vacation because I was thinking to go to Venezuela and asking how many weeks I had to take vacation. How many and, weeks vacation? Yeah, and they told me you have four weeks on Sunday, four weeks. Okay, they check in the city, yeah, do you have four weeks? And this moment in history, the time is start to pass. Oh, soon because I remember Sister Allen told us you have to take the appointment to go to the notary, 21, I spoke with the brother too. 21 is the Titan to pass. I don't have money. I don't have the money. I don't have the money. He okay, vacation. The money. I, have to, I have to speak with the company. But something wrong happened in the company. The company don't pay money if you have the vacation. You need to take the day. It's a rule in the company. It's they a don't rule pay. in the company. They you don't, don't get paid vacation. You take your vacation you, or you lose it. Or you lose it. It's your how I need to speak with my boss. How I want to speak with him. God, give me the grace. I want to tell to him one week, or maybe two weeks good, because with two weeks, it's around 
1000 dollars gonna help me sure the hotel money gonna take to the credit bank okay missing around two weeks Monday, I was in the office, in the office, and my phone was running. And I answered the phone, and I said, "Hello," and my brother said, "Hello, Hector, how are you? Huh? Very fine, are you? We're very well. I want to talk with you because we have a little problem. Yeah, what problem? Your vacation. You have many weeks in vacation. Yeah, yeah. You have eight week, eight weeks. I told him. I I I told her. I told I told him. Are you sure? Yeah, you have eight weeks, and I decide to pay to you four weeks of your vacation. And I, I was, oh my goodness. Are, are you serious? Repeat to him. Yes, why? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. You're going to pay four weeks. You're going to, after that, you're going to take you all week in vacation. And I finished to pay with him, and immediately I take the phone and call Human Resources Department. Hello, hello. Uh, please, can I check how many weeks of vacation I have in the system? See? Yes, Hector, one Didn't second. Didn't trust us, boss. Yeah, one, one second. Uh, eight week, Hector. Eight week? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, in the system, say eight week. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, your boss called me. You're going to for, gonna pay for you four weeks. Stay only four weeks. So, it. wait, wait. He, he gets cash for four weeks, but keeps us four weeks. Now, no, no, no. Remember what I told you? I want people to look at your life and to be able to say, what kind of God do they serve? Here's a company. Company policy is you take it or lose it. And now they're going to pay you for the four weeks. So that's one miracle. Plus, you get to keep your four weeks so you can still go on vacation. With pay, by the way. Incredible. And Continue. I, and this week, I went I, to... I hope you're not bored. I went to the office. In the same week, I went to the office in Quebec City. And I spoke with the people in Human Resources. And I said to, the, uh, to, her, to her, yeah, we want, I'm going to buy a house. I'm very happy, but I'm missing some money. Uh, thank you very much for the four weeks you're going to pay me. Uh, she told me, Eto, why you don't take the money in insurance account? The money in insurance account? What is that? You don't know? No, no. Okay, normally the company take twenty twenty dollar. We start about five five year, uh, twenty dollar each month, and you take you can take this money. Okay, <laughs> I start to count five months, twenty dollar. <laughs> when I go to the system to check how many I had, I had two thousand eight hundred dollar. Wow, wow. Uh, and I say. I don't believe, okay, boom, the money. I took the money. Immediately, I, I, I took the phone, I replied, and asked the money. Okay, we had the money. In the same time, Adriana received 3,000 dollars for payment in his job. Wow. Because they did a mistake in December and January to her. More money come. And we had the, the money to do payment. Wow. We, went, we went to the notary. No, wait, 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 I got a question for you. Okay. So you, 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 you got your down payment. Where's your investment? No, we cannot touch. We cannot touch. We cannot touch. We can. so, so they got their down payment, and they still got their investment. Cha-ching! We cannot... Uh, I'm Bishop, uh, when I, I was in maternity, I went back in January. When he put the money... In investment, it's like we took our savings. Don't ask me in those short months how we got an account in our account, a saving of $13,000. Wow. Because I was in maternity and you have less money. Yeah. And you're still paying all the About same About 40% things. less exactly. if you're on maternity and leave. you're still paying all, all the yeah. same and the food going up and all the services going up. When we, when they call us and we check our account, yes, we don't have to pay, we don't have the money to give the five person, but we was in shock. We say, how we got the money? We didn't know the money, that wow. money was there. So we miss, we miss, but I mean, we miss much less than go from zero, you know? So yes. we was in shock already, and then. <laughs> okay, wait, and, go ahead, go ahead, and, this is good. Okay, we have the, the appointment to the notary. Uh, missing. They're going to the notary. Missing four thousand 
uh, four thousand dollars, one hundred. To the forty one hundred dollars still missing. Going to the notary. Touch. Okay, we are very happy. Okay, okay, but we spot. Yeah. Say Adriana. Yeah, Adriana. Maybe when we're gonna make the task, the money they're gonna give me, we're gonna use it to pay the welcome task. Or oh, let me, me work. I can find another job, only maybe one month. I can find He's the still money. trying to convince her to let <laughs> him get a job, right? <laughs> a second job. She told me, no, no job. Go, go to provide the money. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, go, go to provide. <laughs> In my mind, the bank, I had a credit card. Yeah. I can take $4,000. And we went to the notary this day. We signed the document. And the last minute, the notary, the person told us, I have a good news for you. We said, yeah, yeah, what is the news? Which one? And he told us, you qualify to be exempt to the government to pay the welcome tax. You don't have to pay. Hallelujah. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Hallelujah. You are exempt from paying the welcome tax. You don't have to pay. Wait, wait, wait. How much is the welcome tax? $4,100. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Like, tell me that's not God. Wow. And, and I say, what did you say? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> but, wow. Before you were talking about to share what you received, and I was sharing with my coworkers because I work near to Pierrefonds, and most part of them live there, you know, in the west. And they say they don't believe me. They don't trust me. And I say, why? And they say, no, you can't believe. You got a house at this time, yeah. you know? And I share with my coworker, okay? And she says, um, that kind of things just happened to you. And I say, why? And she say, because you has, you has God in your heart. But uh, I'm different. Like, I know God and everything, but uh, I, I'm different. And I say, no. God loves us, all of us, the same way. And God wants to approach us, all of us, in the same way. And God is calling you the same way. He called me because he wants you to live the same life to me. And I say, and you know what? And that was the Holy Spirit. I say, and you know what? And she told me, no. Because listen, I have 10 years living in this country and I am a single mom. And every year I pay $2,000 return tax to this country and I, ha I have a low income. How comes? And I say, but this year you're going to receive it as return and you're going to have more. So you prophesied yes, to her? Yes, and you're going to receive it as return You go to your, because you go to your country. And the, the, two days before she did make a design of her country because she's from Philippines. And I took the design and I put it in a wall. And she said, why you do that? And I want you to focus your mind because that is beautiful, you know? But when the, the Lord spoke to me, I said, you're gonna get it as a return. And you're gonna have more because you need to change your car because God is concerned wow. about your car too. And you go look at the picture because you go to your country. And she said, are you serious? And I say, God is gonna do it for you for you know God has the same love Jesus. for you. Two weeks later, she received the answer from the accountant and the accountant says, you're gonna receive, it's the same accountant prior 10 years yeah. and he says I don't know what happened this year they're gonna return you two thousand dollars and she told me Adriana this week she told me I have the same friends from long time and I always told them about my needs my situation with the income tax how I bear life so difficult you know and you know what this year because God God you say is listening to me um, this year, one, uh, Sunday, one of my friends asked me, uh, oh, so-and-so, uh, how are you? How, was, how are you? And she says, okay, do you want to go to your country? And she says, okay, I'm going to buy you the ticket. And wow. She, so she says, my money that's come from the income tax, I'm going to say a half because with a half, I can pay to get my car, car yeah. and with the rest I can travel because she's gonna pay my ticket. Wow.
That is absolutely, absolutely incredible. Incredible. Now, elders, I'm going to ask you to join me. Actually, you guys can stay on the floor. What's that? Yes. Yes, it's true. They are. For you that's watching online, you didn't hear that. Somebody from the audience <laughs> interrupted us and said that he, they, they know this couple personally, and they know what the, this entire family, both from Pastor Ricardo and uh, Adriana and Hector, of what they give along with their kids. And, and they sow every single week. And this is a testimony of how God has blessed them back. Pastor Ricardo, you don't happen to have the keys for your house, do you? You have the house, you have the house keys? You have the keys for, for your house? I mean, the house you're giving them. Yeah, their house. Their, you have their house keys. Have they received the keys yet? So are you going to give them the keys today? I told you, you can stay standing, don't sit down. I told you, this stuff, this couldn't be planned. It could not be planned. I'm going to ask the elders that's here, if you can run up on the stage, because we're going to pray over them. We're going to pray over Pastor Ricardo and Elid and their family, and Hector and their family, Adriana. So I'm going to ask you guys to stand to the front, because the elders are going to come out, come around you in the back. You guys need this microphone? You don't need it? Okay, you guys don't need to. Come on, come on up closer. <clears throat> Jesus. 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 Can we just worship for a moment before we pray? Simona. This is a holy moment. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are 